Hey, welcome back. In this video, I'll be showing a way to get bitmap graphics on your RC2014 using this cool little OLED display. This is the Quasar OLED interface for the RC2014. If you've used an RC2014, then you'll be quite aware the output is via serial terminal and ASCII characters. This makes programming it quite easy, but if you wanted to have graphical output, that wasn't possible until now that is. The display is something I've bought and if you want one yourself the details are in the description below. This is the first video in a two-part series where I go through the display and how it works. In this video I'll be showing the hardware and giving an overview of the features. The second video will be more technical and will be all about the hardware, programming it and using a mixture of C and Z80 assembly. So if you want to watch that make sure you subscribe to see that when it comes out. Let's take a closer look at this display module and see what it can do. As you can see, the display is mounted on a PCB with the usual RC2014 backplane connector. The PCB is slightly taller so the display pokes above other boards and it's got this quite nice bit of artwork on the top. The board comes pre-assembled and includes a well-written instruction manual that explains how to program the display. All I had to do was plug it in and fire up my assembler. In fact, I started by using the built-in assembler and the code examples in the manual. The board itself contains very few components, which is something I really like. The appeal of the RC2014 to me is that everything is understandable down to the signals moving between the chips. Situated at the top is the crisp and bright OLED display, which is a 128 by 32 pixel resolution at one bit per pixel. So you can have any color you like, as long as it's green. This is a full pixel based OLED where every pixel is individually addressable. You're not restricted to trying to force data into an 8x8 pixel character cell like you would with a text based LCD. To the left is a set of jumpers for configuring the I.O. address of the display. Under the display is a small collection of ICs which handle decoding logic and then below that is the connector to the Z80 bus. I just want to take a minute to show the manual that comes with this. This isn't a manual I downloaded as a PDF and printed, it came like this in the box. In the manual is everything you need to get the screen working, including an explanation of how the pixels are organised when writing data out to the screen. The manual alone was enough to enable a basic API in Z80 to be created. From that I was able to send images to the screen. The only other piece of documentation I used was the data sheet for the OLED itself. The assembly programming of the screen is what I'm going to explain in part 2 of this video, so be sure to look out for that when it arrives. So what could this board be used for then? Well, I've used it as a fun project to learn more about how the Z80 functions and how digital logic works. You could also use this as a little graphical display and try and write a game for it, using the joystick module as well. I think you could cram maybe a game of Tetris or something in there. It might be a bit tricky with the height of the screen, but you could make something with a horizontal width. The other obvious option is a debugging output. There have been previous projects where simply blinking an LED or lighting up rows of pixels inside loops would have helped debug code quite a lot. It doesn't have a text generator, so you'd need to draw your own characters and write them to the display. However, once you understand how the screen works, it's not that difficult just to copy data onto it. It's all fairly straightforward. So these examples that you're looking at at the moment, I've drawn these using a paint program and then converted them to one bit per pixel images. Because this is only a 128 by 32 pixel screen at one bit per pixel, it only takes 512 bytes to describe the entire screen. It's not that resource hungry if you want to create a screen buffer in your program and fill it with data. I'm sure with a few line drawing algorithms or basic pixel plotting, you could quite easily create a nice little game of something like Snake. The display is something that I've always thought the RC2014 could do with, and it's nice to see that there is one now that's quite easy to use. So in the next video, I'll be showing how I used a mixture of Z80 and C to create the little program that you've been watching so far. So if that's the kind of thing that you're interested in and you liked it, please let me know by pressing the thumbs up button. And if you hit subscribe so you can watch the next one, that'd be really awesome as well. But for now, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. This thing on, I think it is. Hey there, so I'm James, this is my channel. Thank you for staying all the way to the end of the video. Um, as a bit of bonus content, I'm just going to explain what I want to do the following year. So I originally started this back in sort of May, I think it was. 
um, just making random videos about like my soldering iron that I'd bought for 20 quid. And then I bought an RC2014, which I've made tons of videos about. And through that, I've learned Z80 assembly quite well, or at least well enough to be dangerous with. And I want to kind of level up as it were. So back in 2017, I backed the first Spectrum Next Kickstarter and I received a board, which I've put in this Spectrum 48K case. Don't worry, this is a reproduction case. I've not harmed any original Spectrums. I mean, if they made them bright yellow, I'm sure I would have had one already. But no, this is a third party case. And inside the Spectrum Next is a, a well, a recreation of a Z80. And it's also designed for playing games and is quite graphical. So I'm going to try and use that. I've recently discovered that they have a nice Discord server, which I can go and pester them for lots of help when I'm stuck. Another project I need to build is this. It's an ACSI to SD kit, which adds an SD card based hard disk to the Atari ST. I've not built it yet because I need to solder this tiny chip and it's smaller than anything I've done before. The board layout is available online, so I might try and get some boards made to practice on first. I've only got one of these chips and it's already programmed so I don't really want to destroy it and have to buy a new one. I do have the programmer though, so it's not like I'm going to destroy the only thing that I've got. Another project I want to do is um, create some sort of retro games machine using a Raspberry Pi, but I'm not trying to really just jam a Pi in a box. Um, I've ordered a Pi compute module that's on back order. When that eventually turns up, I want to have a go at building a 3D printed case for it. Um, I've got this Pi 400 and I've discovered it boots RISC OS. So having a play with that sounds quite fun. So if that sounds like stuff you're interested in, let me know. I'm kind of just deciding what little projects sound interesting and trying to base them generally around coding. Um, I'm also trying to work out ways of making showing code more interesting. So anyway, thank you for watching to the very end of the video. And if you like this video, please click the little thumbs up button to tell YouTube that you liked it so it shares it to more people like us. And I'll see you in the next video. See you later.